Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. Uh, and uh, since I'm also going, since this is on education, I'm also going to chalk in one of my other qualifications: for a world traveler and for a political science student. Uh, anyway, long story short, I took a look at both the 2020 response, uh, uh, the 2020 video, and your response. And the thing is that I noticed that there were at least a, quite a few. Uh, it, I, I'm from Canada, by the way, so I can take a look at things from a sort of outsider's perspective. But um, I took a look at both your response and the uh, video on the American school system, and I noticed that there were a couple of things which were missing. Some of which have not even been adequately uh, dealt with uh, an up here up here in Canada. Um, if you take a look at not only just the problems with uh, education, but the means as to which uh, you know not just the problems with education and the uh, and the same mentality uh, you were pointing out is true of students. But as you also, if you also take a look at, uh, at how um, large chunks of people deal with information uh, in society, which is not um, uh, which is not uh, agreeing with their particular position, um, for simple examples of this, uh, like the intelligent design uh, uh, the intelligent design contingent, uh, people who believe that um, uh, people uh, there are certain groups of fundamentalist Christians who still believe that um, that uh, that uh, you know they take the Bible to be a literal truth. And then when you suggest that uh, the, uh, and then when you bring up uh, say, scientific evidence for evolution, they'll just go, "Whoa! Well, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It doesn't apply to me." The thing which often work, well, one of the things which I've often, which, which I often have found, and this is one uh, which I've, this is a, a technique I've used and actually met with, uh, met with some success with uh, creation, uh, with creationists, is if you show that it is possible to interpret their own scripture um, uh, in. Um, if you if you if you show that it is possible to interpret uh, Christian scripture as a means of supporting evolutionary theory, or that evolution is God's mechanism for creation, a lot of them start to open up considerably to the idea of evolution. Uh, you just simply take the scientific evidence and then you apply it to their uh, you know by so showing the wording in their own scripture. And I'm not the only one who's had a proof of this. Uh, the Schultz monkey trial from 1922, um, where a Tennessee teacher was uh, tri was uh, tried for uh, teaching evolution in uh, his high school class, which was a crime at that time period. Uh, he was uh, he lost the case due to a technicality, but the prosecution actually lost support, uh, public support at that time period because of the fact that the um, that the that the defense was able to show this uh, scriptural precedent. Uh, this was later reproduced in the movie Inherit the Wind, which was a black and white film in 1950s. Anyway, uh, my, my, uh, what does this have to do with uh, the education system? Well, if you take a look at uh, take a look in large chunks at the way that media works in uh, you know, not, not in terms of conspiracy, but just in in general ways that ad, that you know that various techniques are used uh, in you know in various different formats by education, uh, you know by by politicians, by um, by advertising, by a group. You, if you take a look, you can often find uh, various propaganda techniques, which may uh, various propaganda techniques and critical thinking fallacies, which may not even be intentional, uh, but you know which may not even be entirely intentional in some cases. But um, are effective in manipulating the public. Um, prominent examples of this are um, advertisements uh, where dismemberment happens and the like, uh, or associating, or uh, for example, associating sex with the product uh, by doing that as an emotional argument. Uh, that one's a technique called uh, transference. Um, it's a propaganda technique called transference, where you basically transfer something to somebody who likes to a product without presenting any evidence for uh, why that product works. Or um, maybe giving a lot or, or glittering generalities is one where uh, one would appeal um, patriotism to uh, to a product or something like that. Like say, for example, um, if you don't support uh, if you don't support what we, uh, our position, you are a terrorist. That well, that's an ad hominem. But, you know, it's it's a, it's the exact uh, you know uh, patriots will support our group, which then of course is corollary to an ad hominem attack. But you get my point. The thing is that often not only is critical thinking not taught in classes, but there doesn't seem to be much in the way of a practical application for a lot of students, uh, you know, in the schools and the like. And, um, you know, I'm thinking that that's not just a problem of, you know, of teachers' unions, uh, you know, having too much difficulty. I mean, yes, the uh, the contracts they have shown, uh, you know, as has been shown on the 2020 show, do seem to, and, and in Canada, we have this problem too, that, um, you know, these were designed uh, in at the time period, they were designed specifically to prevent teachers from being exploited, and it was a very good thing. And um, you know, and it was, you know, and it was effective. The problem is, though, is that, um, is that the, uh, is that when the when the situation is that the uh, the times for education and in terms of oppression, at least up in Canada, haven't changed as much. And uh, you know, like like the uh, you know the, the, they haven't changed. Then it 
it wasn't really net. Now, I mean, granted, in terms of inflation, you know, uh, there should be some renegotiations on the contract for better uh, for better uh, salaries for teachers. You know, based on that, I can understand that. But simultaneously, half the uh, they've been constantly getting new amendments. You know, new stuff to prevent discriminations. But half the stuff which they've been doing in Canada for this, I'm not sure about the U.S., uh, you know, I honestly don't know. But up here in Canada, we've been having a similar thing. But in Canada, there have been little to no cases of, uh, you know, like after the first uh, teacher contracts are in, we've had, uh, you know, next to no cases of, uh, you know, people being able to abuse the contracts. And, you know, like we've, you know, we've had uh, one to two developments, you know, I mean, there were, you know, one to two amendments which absolutely were necessary. But there's constant amendments to the contracts which, uh, you know, would allow to prevent teachers from being exploited. But half of these problems have never actually shown up, you know, or, or half of these supposed problems aren't even really problems in the first place, you know. So it's sort of like, um, you know, the, the, you know, it's, it's sort of like it's become a. It, I think it's part of the. Uh, what I'm saying is, I think that this is all part of a larger symptom of our society that we don't actually take a step back and try to see a bigger picture. And as for you know, um, uh, monopoly controlled union and union controlled monopolies by teachers, I doubt very much that half of that's from there. Uh, they said that politics and the like were also big uh, concerns about this. Uh, you know, I think my concern is just, I think the teachers and students are part of the problem issue and they're working you know, in terms of it. But I think they're generally manipulated by a much larger fashion here. Let me bring out a specific stat for you. Less than 50% of the population, both in Canada and the United States, ever go out to vote nationally. Not to mention the fact that the Electoral College in both president and in, uh, and in the, uh, you, know, in the you know, in terms of the presidency, uh, you know, don't even have to vote by their own uh, public. Here's another thing. Um, you know, uh, we've also had, you know, uh, a couple of idiots like elected president and the like. But here's the thing. If a population is, uh, you know, if the school system is not well enough, uh, you know, if the school system either doesn't get enough funding or if, you know, I mean, who initially supposed the legislatures? Were teachers the ones who, and I, this is where I disagree with the 2020, and I agree with you on this one. Uh, you know, the teachers probably do care, but here's the thing. The teachers are working within a constricted curriculum. They don't have the capability. Uh, and I mean, with the charter schools, I mean, they do, you know, they do have a little bit more le uh, legroom for curriculum and how, and how the system is taught. But here's the thing. If teachers are, you know, are not only fighting for their, you know, for their, um, for their other systems and the like, but if the, uh, if the entire school system is bogged down with a whole bunch of old existing regulations that can't get thrown out, you know, uh, you know, either, either imposed by, you know, I mean, the teachers aren't, you know, aren't necessarily the ones who would fight to get to keep the status quo. I mean, what benefit could they possibly have for, you know, except for salaries and the like? No, the people who really have the capability of doing this are governments and corporations. And, um, you know, and, and not just corporations, but society in general. Because here's the thing. If society starts getting educated, uh, th and this has, been, this has been true throughout history, when you have education, the status quo tends to get upset, period. And the better, uh, the better educated people are, the more likely they're going to take a look around the, you know, are going to take a look around them, see how shitty the uh, society is, you know, in terms of you know uh, corporate level, you know, in terms of in terms of market industry, in terms of uh, you know, in terms of market, in terms of um, in terms of politics, in terms of even social relations, and there's going to be upheaval in some area or other. There's always going to be some sort of upheaval. Uh, you want to look for example of this. Take a look at my um, take a look at my videos where I proposed um, issues pertaining to uh, sexual morality or even just calling on various different religious contexts or what have you. I've gotten spams on a bunch of my videos just for setting status quo. Uh, even calling a video where I said you know where I pointed out the critical thinking fallacies in terms of racism got me huge amounts of uh, spam. You know, and these are just and these are just indicate you know like these are just token indicators. With change, with uh, with education can come change. With change comes upset, and people who are in positions of power in general, just clean across the board, or even people who you know who like their standard of living and are afraid of change, are going to become uncomfortable with it. And you know, and if they don't want society to change, what do you think they're going to do? They're going. To, it's a subconscious thing, and they genuinely, like they said, like don't go for vouchers because they're unproven. Translation, you know, translation. It's not just you know uh, translation is, is change. There's no evidence to support it. Let's not uh, let's not go for it. But here's but here's the question. Uh, but as um, as the folks pointed out, if they haven't been given a chance, you know, even in some area, then uh, how would they have any evidence for them? You know, if, if if you don't test it, you know, in a scientific context, if you don't test something, you know, a hypothesis put forward, then you won't uh, you know then to say that you know there's no proof for it because it hasn't been tested. It's a tautology. It's a, again another uh, critical thinking fallacy. But my point being is that you know if if there's fright and amount of change, then uh, if nothing ever gets tried, then the system becomes stagnant and starts having the problems that you see here. Maybe it's time for a little bit of change just in general. And
to start looking at this in a much larger context of the system, not just in terms of education? Well, my thoughts. 